Thank you very much for your attendance. So this presentation will have the title of Special Construction Consideration of the Middle East. Now, the outline of the presentation will start first uh, by the origin of these considerations and how these special considerations were identified. Then we'll go for uh, the challenges, the challenges that affected these considerations and uh, the base of these considerations. Then I will talk about two case studies uh, in which uh, these considerations were implemented and were integrated for a successful end product. Now, talking about the origins of the special consideration, uh, after 1970, there was uh, a boom of construction in the Middle East. Now, uh, having this need for uh, construction standards, now the Middle East construction industry have taken all the available documents, all the available information, and used it in the construction industry. However, not all these uh, standards and this information was relevant to the Middle East construction industry. The workmanship also, the lack of workmanship competence has created uh, additional constraints, especially when it comes to durability. So we ended up that uh, after having a survey of the structures, uh, several structures has come to uh, a terminal uh, status after 12 to 15 years. And when we were talking about uh, the boom in construction in the Middle East, I took here two pictures. The first is uh, for Dubai, the difference between 1990 and 2015, and the difference uh, uh, for Qatar between 1980 and 2013. Of course, this was complemented by uh, many numbers like the growth in population in UAE, Saudi Arabia, the price of oil uh, barrels, and all this has contrib contributed to a boom in construction. Now, what are the construction challenges that are available in the Middle East? We start first by the severe environment, the lack of quality materials, the lack of competent workmanship and quality control, the nature of the surface soil and the groundwater, and the large scale and fast track pro project. Now, these are the challenges that uh, uh, created these special consideration for the construction. Now, going by each type of challenge, I will start by the environmental challenges. Now, the environmental challenges, the, the weather in the Middle East is characterized by a high evaporation, high and low uh, humidity based on the areas in the Middle East. Sometimes the daily change of the humidity or the seasonal change of humidity is very high. We have a salt contamination. We have windborne contaminated dust, and all this is affected, uh, affecting the materials, the construction material used in the industry. Also high soil radiation. And, you know, for the environmental, uh, environmental challenges, it's not only affecting uh, maybe uh, the type of or the concrete practices, but also the workmanship in this area. If you can see here in the picture, even though we, we, ha we do have uh, a lack of workmanship, this environmental condition has affected also this workmanship comfort. With high temperature, high humidity, uh, the workmanship comfort will be lower. Now, these environmental challenges has affected the construction industry where more stringent hot weather uh, precaution were necessary. You can see in some, in the first picture, some of the practices are using dust, uh, dust systems to cool the ambient, uh, the ambient temperature or working at night. This is the placing operation of a RAF foundation. Uh, the workmanship comfort, also there was some, uh, some lows or some restriction on the working time for uh, the construction industry and the durability requirements. Of course, with high temperature, uh, the durability or the service life will be, will be lower. The chemical reactions that are affecting the degradation of the concrete will be more pronounced. So all these environmental conditions have affected these three aspects going from the practices to the workmanship comfort and the durability requirements. Now I'll go to the second consideration, which is the material quality. The material quality, uh, we have several constraints in the material available uh, uh, in the Middle East area. First, we have uh, some material that are poorly graded. The high rate of evaporation has contaminated several uh, materials with, uh, with chloride and sulfate. Uh, the price of the transportation, because the good quality material are restricted in several or in uh, small areas, becomes very excessive. And we have a major 
uh, clinical variation for the cement industry. Now, when I will go to the case study of one uh, of the airport project, with several uh, type of clinker and uh, several type of cement, we were getting several uh, initial setting time, and this restrained the use uh, to the use of only a single source of cement. Now, this is a geology of uh, the areas in the, in the Middle East, uh, specifically in the Arabian the Peninsula. You can see that the good quality material are uh, somehow restricted to uh, the west of Saudi Arabia, uh, to UAE, and also to Oman. And these are the main sources of the aggregate. Now, because of this, it's very normal for uh, a majority of the project to have uh, sand washing uh, facilities and uh, aggregate processing facilities for the project. Now I'll go to the next point, which is the lack of uh, competent workmanship and the lack of uh, quality control. They are all together mixed and one is affecting the other. And uh, in order to take this into consideration, the designers has moved toward the precast concrete instead of in situ concrete. Now here in the picture you can see uh, huge arches that are used for an airport construction. Instead of having all this in situ, uh, the designer had changed it to precast concrete where the quality could be monitored uh, in a more efficient, efficient way. Also, this uh, uh, lack of quality control and lack of workmanship has uh, enforced a more stringent uh, testing and inspection scheme where you can see the laboratory testing are coupled with quality control and the start with the consistent uh, 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 constituent material assessment, the black batching plant inspection, the field testing, the post-placing evaluation, and all goes together with the inspection. Now, if I want to compare, for example, uh, the testing scheme of ACI 311 or Special Publication 2 to the uh, inspection or testing scheme that we are using in large-scale project, it's almost with a ratio of 3 to 4. So we have an excessive amount of testing just because of the material are fluctuating and the workmanship have less uh, competency. Now, some of the laboratories like uh, ACTS were using uh, online platform in order uh, just to manage this large-scale testing. When you have, for example, 1,000 cylinders to be tested per day, uh, 5,000 aggregate testing to, to be done on a monthly basis, you will need a better management system in order to make sure that all the results are uh, tested and reporting uh, reported efficiently. Now, going to the last uh, requirement of uh, or the consideration of the construction in the Middle East is the durability design. Now, it's uh, usual to follow, for example, prescriptive base specification to specify durability requirements like, for example, ACI 318 or BSEN 206 or other uh, local code. And sometimes they are complemented with performance based specification like testing for. Uh, rapid chloride penetration, water permeability, water absorption. Now the same scheme is used in the Middle East, starting with the perspective-based specifications. Whoever is doing a durability assessment will go through the ACI 318, BS EN206, and would limit the water cement ratio, the cement content, cementitious material, and also the type of cementitious material and the compressive strengths. Going one step ahead, there are requirements on the performance-based testing, laboratory performance-based testing, which are uh, based on comparison with other projects. For example, if one of the projects has satisfied a certain service life under a uh, uh, requirement for performance-based testing, they will use the same value and limit the performance-based testing for the specific project. Going more into a precise way of modeling the durability, uh, degradation-based models like what you can see on Life 365 or other calculation for the chloride diffusion coefficient. Now, these models are used in order to calculate the service life of the concrete. Now, if we compare the models that are available today in the Middle East for the calculation of the chloride diffusion coefficient and consequently the concrete service life, you can see the huge uh, discrepancy that you have 
and the several available models, starting for concrete works, Life 365. Now, all these models are used today in the Middle East. But for the same mixed design, if you vary the water cement ratio, you can see the great difference in uh, the corresponding chloride diffusion coefficient and also the resulting surface life. This is why uh, several concrete technology firms, like also ACTS, have created their own models based on uh, large-scale testing campaigns that exceeded 15,000 uh, tests, where all the parameters that are affecting the service life uh, and the chloride diffusion co coefficient in the Middle East were taken into consideration. Now, if you want to take a look at the affecting parameters for the calculation of the chloride diffusion coefficient, you have the temperature, the age, the relative humidity, the water cement ratio, of course, like all the models, the cementitious material content, uh, type, density, surface area, chemical composition, hydration coefficient, the curing time, initial mixing time, the consolidation degree, and most importantly, the crack widths. Now, these were the, uh, the considerations that were taken in the Middle East construction. I will go now to two case studies where all these uh, considerations were integrated and implemented. The first case study is the Kuwait International Airport Project. Now, the Kuwait International Airport project has this triangular shape. Uh, the structural elements are based on huge arches made out of uh, beige concrete, all of which is uh, precast concrete. So you have a raft foundation, and from this raft foundation, you will have uh, massive columns, and all the arches between spines and rib are uh, installed on these massive columns. Uh, the ceiling is made out of uh, precast shell cassette, all of which is uh, the beige concrete with uh, a skylight opening. These are other pictures of the project. And here in the picture, you can see also uh, the structural design of uh, these elements, the raft foundation, the massive uh, columns, the arches, and also the ceiling. In this project, we had five batching plants that were uh, efficiently monitored. We had one sand washing plant. All the hot weather concrete practices were implemented in a stringent way. The precast, uh, the concrete design was a precast concrete uh, to limit the workmanship constraint and to have a better quality control. The self-consolidated concrete was used in all these mixes for uh, the arches and also for the beige concrete. Uh, using this self-consolidated concrete was mainly to limit uh, the workmanship and to limit the effect of uh, the site quality control on the and the product. The online platforms were used for laboratory testing and quality control to manage this uh, large-scale testing and inspection. And the concrete durability design was made following uh, the three items as prescriptive. So the durability design satisfied the prescriptive-based specification, the performance-based testing, and also the available degradation models. Now, these are some pictures of uh, the construction where you can see the arches, the massive columns, the flank walls. These are the beige concrete that were installed on the massive columns. These were the precast application. These are, uh, on the right, you can see one of the ribs that's installed on the massive column and the beige concrete on the left. These are some pictures from uh, the installation. And for this installation, a 350-ton screen was required. Now, this is what uh, the project looks like now uh, at the percentage of completion. This is also another picture of the precast items, the ribs, the spines, and also the ceiling item. Now, I'll go to the second large-scale project in the Middle East where all these special considerations were applied and uh, resulted with an acceptable and durable end product. It's uh, King Abdelaziz International Airport in Saudi Arabia and Jeddah. Now, this project included a total of 6 million cubic meters of, uh, of concrete. It has several parts going from what you can see here in the picture, the uh, passenger terminal building. You had the control tower, the main rescue building, the data centers, the transportation centers, uh, the railway station, the mosques. Also in this project, uh, 
the majority of the special structures were replaced using self-consolidated concrete. Now here you can see the transportation center, the arches with congested steel reinforcement. The total placing uh, of concrete per month has reached or exceeded in some instance 170,000 cubic meters of concrete. And while talking about the testing, per month we were doing 5,000 testing of aggregate and approximately 1,000 uh, cylinders per day. So all these uh, large-scale uh, testing required online and efficient management system in order to have an efficient reporting and analysis tool. Now, as conclusions, the special construction consideration in the Middle East originate from, first, the severe environment, the lack of material quality control, the workmanship uh, quality control, and also the need for large-scale fast-track projects. All these considerations can be uh, can be can be taken care of by uh, including hot weather concrete practices, laboratory uh, testing, and concrete inspections. Now, these schemes or these considerations that were learned and identified through the past years were integrated or were successfully integrated in several large scale projects, like the two uh, biggest airport, Kuwait International Airport, and also uh, Jeddah Airport. This was everything for this presentation. Thank you very much. So beautiful, very sophisticated construction. I have a question. You said because of lack of quality control, did you have lots of quality control? You have, you have lots of testing. Yes, we have lots of okay, testing. Okay, so what I'm trying, can you explain what the lots of testing get you? What, no. what changes in behavior or do you catch things? The concrete is bad. It's yes. already in. Did you take it out? What, 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 exactly. what, what do you now, do? Uh, the, the reason why we're doing uh, excessive testing, because we have lack of quality material. The lack of quality material include one important parameter, which is the fluctuation of quality. So even if you are uh, having the same material on site and you are testing it every day, you have several days where the require or the test results will be non-compliant with your specifications. So do you so throw out the material? What do you, what do you do? Now, for, uh, for each type of non-compliance, of course, you have a certain action plan. Now, if the results are way, uh, way below the requirement, of course, we will have to reject the material and bring a new material. However, some deficiencies can be dealt on with, with, with other means, for example either with over design or or other uh, but you uh, make corrective. changes you make changes constantly based on the test results yes okay of course any other questions yes sir the um, you mentioned the, the lack of uh, quality workmanship was another issue mm. and offered the use of briquettes called concrete mm -hmm. as an alternative to try to mitigate that uh, is there, a, and I can see that it made a big difference in this big project, but is there a more long-term plan to improve the quality of the workmanship? Yeah, exactly. Project? Actually, it, it was a bit of a sensitive uh, statement to, to say that we have a lack of workmanship because if I want to judge the workmanship today, it will be much better than what it was, for example, 10 years back. The lack of workmanship that I mentioned in the presentation was uh, to adopt the workmanship from 1970 till today to the need that we have in the construction. So the workmanship was behind the needs that we have, but it not, doesn't mean that throughout the years we still have lack of, of workmanship. So uh, the companies and all uh, the construction industry has, has learned from you know, all these large-scale projects and enhanced drastically their workmanship and their quality control. And, uh, you know, the way that we are enhancing this workmanship is by having a more stringent quality control and testing on the companies that are, that are working. So once the project uh, or the work is rejected first and second time, all the workmanship will start learning that they need to make uh, their job perfectly in order not to get it rejected. So imposing a sort of specification or a stringent specification on the high end product is the leading motivation in enhancing all these workmanship. Thank you very much. Thank you.